I really, really like it. <laughs> Hello friends, my name is Brandon Dayton, I'm your humble narrator, welcome back to another bundle banter. Humble Bundle is back with our favorite bundle of the month, generally, usually, this time for sure. <laughs> it is the July 2020 Humble Choice Bundle, and it is looking tasty, especially if you like strategy games, which you know I do. So let's take a look at what games they've included. We've got Age of Wonders Planetfall Deluxe. Oh, oh, that's so good. <laughs> Void Bastards, Railway Empire, Battlestar Galactica Deadlock, Yuppie Psycho, Beat Hazard 2, Sigma Theory, Global Cold War, Metal Unit, Don't Escape, Four Days to Survive, Verlet Swing, Bassing Stoke, and Earthlock. And oh my goodness, there are some fantastic titles in here. Some of them I hadn't heard of before, and I was so pleasantly surprised. So we'll talk about each of these games individually, and I'll let you know which ones you should pick and which ones you should probably leave in the dust. So starting with Age of Wonders Planetfall, one of the very first 4X strategy games that managed to catch my attention. I fell in love with the original Age of Wonders, even though I was completely terrible at it. I latched on to the second and third iterations, getting incrementally better with each one, not just because of practice, but also because, you know, I was getting older, and my brain wasn't as half-baked as before. Well, Age of Wonders Planetfall should be the penultimate Age of Wonders experience, but I honestly can't pick it over Age of Wonders 3. The mechanics are solid, and the battles do feel just as huge and epic as any other Age of Wonders, but let me pose you a question. Would you rather play as a bunch of goblins with a unicorn regiment, or a bunch of different dudes with different kinds of guns? As a self-admitted fantasy nerd, I will always choose a high magic aesthetic over a sci-fi tech one. Spells are more interesting, units are nice to look at, races feel significantly different. I can't point to anything that Planetfall does wrong, but it does feel just kind of flat compared to its fantasy-based predecessor, at least in my opinion. If you like sci-fi more than fantasy, then you'll probably go gaga for Planetfall, but I'm gonna stick to Age of Wonders 3 for another six years or more. One last thing that I will say about the Age of Wonders series as a whole is that battles are generally over long before they actually end, so you'll know if you're gonna win, it's just a matter of getting to your opponent's cities and toppling them, which can be frustrating for some people. Maybe there should be a mercy rule or something like that implemented, but... Regardless, Age of Wonders is just a fantastic series, and Age of Wonders Planetfall is no exception. It's just it's just a question of aesthetics, really. So I definitely enjoy Planetfall, but I enjoy Age of Wonders 3 just a little bit more. Void Bastards, a stylish roguelike that will task you with counting your ammo while also keeping an eye on your oxygen tank. Yes, it is difficult. The aesthetic is also fantastic, and the gameplay is tight. But with all that said, it feels like there is a bigger and better game just below the surface that the developers weren't quite able to bring out. I won't dwell too much on what the game could have been because of course that's an exercise in futility. So what if the crafting system is a little bit shallow? At least it has a crafting system, right? So what if the upgrades are kind of pointless? It's better than nothing. Lack of enemy variety is also a big downer, but at least there's something to shoot. Yeah, you get the idea. Void Bastards is a great title, despite its many failings. The story is pretty out of the box and humorous, which meshes flawlessly with the amazing comic book aesthetic that I mentioned earlier. The gameplay loop is overall fun and satisfying, and it'll easily catch you with that good old one more turn feeling. You'll sit down for a quick run of Void Bastards at 8pm and tell yourself you'll be in bed in less than an hour and get up in time for work, and by the time you catch a hold of your brain long enough to look at the clock, it's already 3 a.m. and you're still trying to convince yourself that you can go to work if you only sleep two hours and get one more run of Void Bastards in. <laughs> it's just absolutely perfect. Railway Empire, hooray! Another colonialism simulator! <laughs> Build a railway empire all the way across the new world and become an American oligarch, huzzah! If you can work your way past the abysmal UI, that is. The game itself looks fairly nice, apart from the absolutely hideous interface. But don't be distracted by the nice models. The interface is just an indicator of some deeper problems. The AI feels overtuned because, try as I might, I'll admit to you right now that I start up games in Railway Empire 
knowing in advance that I'm about to get my ass kicked. Perhaps the learning curve is just steeper than I'm willing to commit the time to overcome, but I've played a lot of games with resource management and strategy elements, and if you're trying to make the argument that that experience doesn't carry over to this title, then that's a problem in my book. I think perhaps things just happened too quickly for me to keep tabs on it all. For instance, how many turns would you estimate that it should take to tunnel underneath the Rocky Mountains? Well, I'll tell you, that number is in the single digits, and I'll also tell you that that is way too fast. That mountain range is gonna look like Swiss cheese before the game is over. Cities seem to develop too fast, and research happens too fast, and I'm, I'm a slow boy. And I thought a train game, of all things, would be on board with that, if you'll forgive the pun. Railway Empire is a pretty decent game, but there's a lot of other, more decent games that I would like to play instead. Shouts out to Rise of Industry. <laughs> Battlestar Galactica Deadlock. This ain't Planetfall. This sci-fi game actually takes place in the lifeless void of space. Unfortunately, the game itself ends up being pretty lifeless. Despite being a beautiful and well-built game with plenty of depth to its combat that should have probably been taken better advantage of, it kind of feels to me like the developers were scared to present players with an actual challenge. You'll cruise through space until you end up in a fight with some cyclones. Basically, every enemy fleet is a cyclone, and almost all of those fleets are frustratingly similar. The enemy fleet is pretty easily dispatched using the method that you like the best, and the game doesn't ever really mix things up. Extremely well-built strategy games would conduct each combat session as a tactical puzzle of sorts that needed varying strategies in order to overcome. In this game, the same strategy will work from your first combat session to your last. When gamers find a strategy that works, they'll rely on it until it doesn't anymore. And when a strategy never stops working, you'll sail through the game pretty easily and feel quite unfulfilled by the end of things. Battlestar Galactica is a great show, and the game looks great, but it definitely lacks the depth that the show is so renowned for. This is indeed one of the games that I will be skipping for this bundle. Yuppie Psycho! Now here is a game that is very difficult to put into words, and if you know how much I love words, and how verbose I can get about just about anything, that might come as quite a shock. Well, the low-res pixel graphics are serviceable, and I think the true purpose of such an abstract art style is to soften the blow when you see some real shit. I mean, this is a horror game, so it does touch on some wild subjects. Murder, suicide, depression, with just a light sprinkling of gore. Delicious. I've seen plenty of indie games with a similar art style that forget to put any effort into the background. Well, not Yuppie Psycho. You can play with almost anything in the background that you see and there are plenty of treats for the curious gamer to uncover. Achievements and lore, I mean, you should probably be focused on surviving instead of digging around in a pile of knickknacks, but you do you, bro. The endings do kinda suck, they leave me with a lot of questions, but in a game like this, I think it's all about the journey. While it is a horror game, it doesn't take itself too seriously, and it isn't scared to get goofy or throw a joke into the mix, which is a valuable attribute that I think a lot of other horror games I've played would do well to emulate. Yuppie Psycho might not be for everyone, but I do think it is an experience worth having. Maybe not Pony Island levels of greatness, but still pretty great. Beat Hazard 2! If you've ever thought that Audio Surf would be a lot more fun as a bullet hell, then say hello to Beat Hazard. The original Beat Hazard was... okay. A bit rough on the eyes, and honestly didn't do much to set itself apart. Beat Hazard 2 features a functionality that was stripped out of Audio Surf 2's toolbox, Open Mic Mode. Yes, this basically lets you play songs that are generated from streamed music on YouTube or Spotify, and in a digital age of media, this is so freaking invaluable. Who do you know that still downloads songs? Besides your grandma, I mean. Being able to play via streamed music was the greatest addition to Audio Surf 2, and now that that's been stripped away, well, Beat Hazard 2 gets to take over. This is now the go-to game for procedurally generated insanity based on your music tastes. Unless you have Beat Saber, of course. Creating levels based on music is an amazing concept, and it's only just starting to be opened up as far as I can tell. 
Beat Hazard 2 does it extremely well. Beat Hazard felt kind of basic and didn't have a whole lot to do, but Beat Hazard 2 takes things to the next level and puts that competitive element into this game. Chasing high scores, checking the leaderboards, unlocking the gigantic range of ships available, and then playing with those ships on the wildest dubstep song you can find, even though you hate the genre, just because you can. Yeah, Beat Hazard 2 does it right, all right. And it does it all while looking amazing. Compare Beat Hazard 1 and Beat Hazard 2. Oof, we've come a long way. <laughs> Sigma Theory Global Cold War. Turn-based strategy game based on espionage rather than who has the biggest guns? Mmm, this is an RTS for the modern age, and I'm extremely pleased to see it included in this bundle. I will say, the RNG will make or break a lot of your decisions in this game, which some people seem to hate, but as I've stated before, I don't really mind it at all. Make a plan, have it fall apart because of some bad luck, Know to yourself that you are at an extreme disadvantage, but try to succeed anyways. Sometimes you will, most times you won't. But the gameplay loop is so much fun that it doesn't really seem to matter. A great aesthetic and a unique take on strategy that will please people who thrive on overcoming the RNG. Even if someone out there objectively does not like this game, they should at least have the wherewithal to respect what it's trying to do in a genre that's been largely dominated by games consisting of nothing but shooty boom boom for decades. It isn't perfect, and having your best agent kidnapped for seemingly no reason is frustrating. The RNG will test your limits. But let me tell you this, just, just play it through. It's always darkest before the dawn, and if you succeed, you'll know for certain that you earned that shit. The RNG isn't always there to slam your ass, sometimes it'll help you out. But most of the time you gotta go through a little ass slamming before you end up getting the really good stuff. Sigma Theory ain't for everyone, but I really enjoyed it. Metal Unit! This is the kind of pixel art that made me fall in love with the style. No shade on Yuppie Psycho, but this is an aesthetic done justice. Hop in your mech suit, enjoy some platforming, beat em up action. The range of attacks that you can perform is pretty wide. I mean, when I say beat em up, most people will envision Fists of Fury, or like a sword at best. And while Metal Unit does provide the sword, it also provides ranged weapons and sub weapons and ultimate attacks. Enemy variety is fairly wide, and you have to contend with melee and ranged opponents as you see fit. You can equip different weapons and armor to assist you, but how powerful they are is based on a rarity system. Ah uh, yes, the RNG returns. <laughs> I will say, however, that Metal Unit leaves you feeling much more in control of those RNG results than Sigma Theory does. Even if you've got a loadout of absolute vendor trash, you can still make your way through the stages if you put your game face on and get good. Combat is fast, responsive, tasty, and the game is just an absolute pleasure to play with slight change up in level layouts between playthroughs. Even the story offers a taste of something different, so... Definitely don't miss out on this one. Right alongside Planetfall and Void Bastards, this is my favorite game of the bundle. Don't escape, four days to survive. Okay, yes, it's a point and click, but, but hear me out. It's a post-apocalyptic point and click with some clever and well-built puzzles, so I think I still gotta recommend Don't Escape. The concept of Don't Escape basically takes one of those popular escape room puzzles and does the exact opposite. One of the best things about the puzzles in Don't Escape is that you can be partially correct and get a different result in the story based on that. Every action that you take advances the clock a little bit at a time and you only have four days to survive so you need to make sure that you aren't screwing around for too long. I mean, this ain't Majora's Mask and there's no song of time to reset that timer. You win, or you lose. And when you jump back into the game, you're gonna see a whole new series of twists and turns, which means that this is actually a point and click with some replay value to it. Sounds like a crazy concept, I know, but believe me when I say, you are going to want to try again. It takes a lot for a point and click to get me playing wholeheartedly, let alone diving back in for round two. So trust me when I say that Don't Escape deserves your attention. Verlet Swing. I really enjoyed Floating Point. 
It's a free-to-play game. It's pretty nice. You should check it out if you haven't. It basically gives me that Spider-Man feeling without the added pressure of stopping criminals. Well, Verlet Swing took the Spider-Man-y level navigation to the next level, so to speak, by setting it inside a vaporwave-drenched, cocaine-fueled fever dream. It's definitely one of those easy-to-play, difficult-to-master types of games, which means that basically anyone can sit down and have a good time with it. Grappling hook mechanics are just always good. Just Cause, Batman Arkham series, a story about my uncle, Energy Hook, y'all probably don't know about Energy Hook, even fucking Bionic Commando. Grappling hooks are an essential ingredient for instant success. So when you take that and you smash it up with the aesthetic that everyone has a boner for this decade, and lightly roll that in some surreal visuals, oh, you've got a giant victory cake that tastes unlike anything else. The levels are enjoyable, challenging, and well built. You aren't just looking at a gigantic pile of dissonant shit. Everything you see has a purpose. I was shocked and amazed by Verlet Swing, and I think you will be too. Bassing Stoke. Short, but enjoyable stealth game that lets you craft up some weapons. It's another semi-horror game that isn't afraid to go a little bit goofy from time to time, similar to Yuppie Psycho. Unlike Yuppie Psycho, however, I don't feel like Bassing Stoke has enough content to warrant a replay. It's an enjoyable romp for 12 levels, but once you reach the end, you're just like, okay, I guess I'll put this one on the shelf so I could tell people I played it if they asked about it. But nobody will ask about it, because nobody talks about it, yourself included. And so, the vicious cycle continues. I find that a bit sad, because the game really isn't terrible, it just lacks a sense of accomplishment. You have all your recipes from the start, then you run through a procedurally generated level, grab an item, run to the safe room, craft if you're able to, rinse, repeat, ad infinitum, ad nauseum. There are different characters available, granted, but it's only visual. They all play exactly the same. So, I'd give Bassing Stoke a spin if you're into the aesthetic or the concept, but don't expect to get sucked in for an all-day gaming session. It does what it does okay, but I feel like it could have been bigger and better. Now let's end things out on a positive note with Earthlock. Ugh. A fantasy JRPG with gorgeous visuals, turn-based combat, a talent system to customize your characters, weapon crafting, and... Dogs. Lots of dogs, just so fucking loud. <laughs> And a uniquely built world that steers far clear of the elves and dwarves fantasy world that we've all grown accustomed to. Good god, just take my money already. Be warned that this is a pretty short game for an RPG, and an extremely short game for a JRPG, but holy hell, is it a blast to play. The story doesn't take too many risks, but the characters are well written and have motives that are fairly believable. Each character also has a unique ability that can be used outside of combat, so you'll likely be swapping characters back and forth to interact with things, which keeps traveling from feeling too monotonous. You can max out your characters really quick with just a little bit of power leveling, which might be a positive or a negative depending on how you feel about the grind. For me, it's a bit of a negative since I enjoy the grind, but Earthlock made me fall in love regardless. The most exciting thing of all is that Earthlock 2 is currently in development, which might be why Earthlock is in this bundle at all, but I'm definitely looking forward to revisiting the unique world of Earthlock for a second go-round. Depending on which platforms it releases on, I might even be willing to pay full price. Having Earthlock 2 on my Nintendo Switch? Oh, gorgeousness and gorgiosity. <laughs> but even on Steam, I might pick it up. Although I haven't been playing Steam very much outside of these bundles. So what do I think of this bundle? Oh, I'm extremely impressed. I really, really like it. Even the two games that I dropped out, it's like, it's not that they're objectively bad games. It's just that they could have done more with those games. So it's, it's just me being disappointed at the potential that the games had and they didn't quite live up to. So really easy top three for this bundle. Void Bastards, Planetfall, Metal Unit. But uh, everything is really good. Earthlock, I love it. Sigma Theory, I loved it. Verlet Swing, I loved it. Don't Escape, I loved it. 
Beat Hazard 2, amazing. Yuppie Psycho, tasty. Uh, the, the bottom ones would be Railway Empire, Battlestar Galactica, Deadlock, and Bassingstoke. But even those were not easy to give up, man. <laughs> Bassingstoke has an amazing aesthetic. It's extremely well done. I like the crafting and the the stealthy mechanics and stuff like that. Ah, Railway Empire is pretty well built aside from the UI. It just moves a little too fast for a strategy game in my book. Battlestar Galactica Deadlock, there's so much potential there if the game developers would have simply grabbed their balls and, and decided that they wanted to actually present a challenge to the player. I think that's the most disappointing thing is that you could just waltz through. Which if you're not familiar with strategy games might be a good thing and you could feel like a winner, but for somebody who plays strategy games almost exclusively these days, it was just the slightest bit disappointing as an experience. But if you're into the show, then you know, you might enjoy the game more than I did. I never really got into Battlestar Galactica. I had a friend that was and he tried to tell me about it and I'd be like, okay, bye. <laughs> I can't have this conversation right now, but apparently the lore is fucking deep. So yeah, we've gone from one of the worst choice bundles. I think maybe Humble's listening because last month it was just the worst. I didn't actually pause it like I said I was going to do because I'm weak and uh, <laughs> I couldn't talk myself into that. But we went from that like borderline bundle to this one that it really did blow my socks off. I guess if you're not into strategy games, it might not please you as much, but as a strategy aficionado, this bundle is fucking tasty. I really, really like it. Although, yeah, I could, I could definitely see why people wouldn't, perhaps, if they aren't as into the strategy games, but there is other stuff in there for ya, you know what I mean? Earthlock, Verlet Swing, Beat Hazard, Bassing Stoke, Don't Escape, Void Bastards. You know, there's a lot of stuff that isn't necessarily strategy, but yeah, you'll probably be left with a couple of strategy games <laughs> that you won't play if you're not into them. And if that's the case, donate them to Dayton Does His Discord because we're giving away Railway Empire uh, in the Discord as soon as this video goes up. So that'll be sweet, even though I just kind of talked a little bit of shit about it, but still it's a pretty good game, especially if you get it not just cheap, but absolutely for free. <laughs> But that's about all I've got to say. I've yacked on far too much probably, but I hope I gave you a good idea of what's in the bundle, what I like, what you might like, and I hope you like, comment, and or subscribe on this video, friends. Check out the links in the description to Twitter, Discord, Patreon. I told you about the Discord giveaway, but did you know about my beautiful patrons? There are seven of them now. Well, there were eight, but <laughs> one didn't make a payment. So he got dropped. I'm sorry, Mr. Weasel. I'll see, I'll see you next month, maybe. But for those who remain, we've got Robert Waits, Dot Nathan, Crimson Albedo, Lady Nix, Radimus, Cisco, Damon, Darkstar, and the OG, Nico the Legend. And Nico has officially been supporting the channel for two years, so <laughs> big ups, dude. When I say he is my most stalwart ally, I mean most stalwart ally without question but anyways friends i'm gonna get out of here i got some other stuff to work on for my reddit channel but i'll get this video up and publish and we can rap about it in the comments and the discord or wherever you might find me so this has been bundle banter the july 2020 humble choice bundle i've been brandon dayton your humble narrator i shall see you in the next one probably fanatical bundle we've been ignoring them for too long i feel kind of guilty now <laughs> <laughs> So join me for that, and until the next time, friends, bye-bye.